we can go right ahead and talk about the first segment, which is going to be all about Chris Stapp's Porzingis. And the reason why it's going to be all about Chris Stapp's is because he was, he's played on both the Dallas Mavericks, the team that he has to play in the finals. He's played on the Knicks, the team that the um, Pacers ended up beating in the conference in the semifinals and now he is on the Celtics where he's playing in the NBA finals. Now, the fact that Chris Stapps, he was out for a majority of the third playoff series as well as some of the second playoff series for whatever reason it might be. It was mainly due to injury and but he did sit out in game 4 of the previous game against the Pacers simply because he didn't want to avoid any further injury in um, in that series, which would have prevented him from playing in the first game on Thursday night, which uh, brings us to this question in the chat from Lil Felicini. He's asking, who's taking the game on Thursday night? And, I mean... Now that they have, now that there's Chris Stapps in the um, in the rotation, and now that he's back in the starting lineup, there's like there was a little bit um, of a there was a little bit confusion coming in from me, and like um, I was worried on some ends of on some parts of the game where it's like, okay, I mean, there's a possibility that they'll the Celtics, regardless whether they have Chris Stapps or not, are gonna end up winning in Game One. But do I really want to pick them until I know that Chris Stapps is going to be healthy? So, I mean, I've always I've had the Celtics winning the the series for the longest time. I mean, I hope they don't, but for the sake of getting um, the right picks, I think that the Celtics are probably going to end up coming out in um, as the winners in the first game. They do have home court. Ad- Mm, excuse me they have home court advantage they have a much they have much longer time to rest they have um they have all the prep time they could possibly ask for for this one game so i i think they have the best chances of winning game one and starting out the series rather strong and i mean come on they have the home they have home court advantage this is a team that absolutely thrives when playing i mean granted I can't really say that they thrive in playing in the home court because their only losses in the playoffs have been on home court. So it's a little bit like, again, but then most of the time they have, they've gone undefeated in game ones. So I think game one is definitely like their best, uh, their best chance of winning a game in the series. If they are, if they are going to win at least one game, it's probably going to be the first one. And like, I... I also see, like, throughout the rest of the series, now that they have Chris Stapps, I do see them completely utilizing their, um, all, all of the, uh, the assets that they could possibly have in the starting lineup. We didn't really get to see much of that in the previous, uh, I guess you could say playoff series, but the players that came off the bench, mainly Al Horford, he made most of his minutes count. He became the oldest player to hit seven three-pointers in a single playoff game, which is very impressive in of itself. And obviously, you know, being a big man and that that is known for his jump shot, it's a very rare skill in the NBA. And the fact that he was, he's as old as he is while still being able to provide some sort of impact for the Boston Celtics, it's nothing short of impressive. Definitely something that they that they needed from him and it i mean it's like really what more can you ask like there's really nothing more that you can ask from him given just how um impactful that al horford has been throughout the majority when especially when chris Stapps has been injured for most of the series now given that chris Stapps, he's it's been a while since he's played there's also the possibility of him being a little bit rusty going into the final series now This is sort of like, this is sort of like the big problem that I have with a lot of, with these games and the fact that it takes so long for the the next playoff series to start. Like, 
it shouldn't be taking this it should not take this long for game one of the nba finals to take place it should be it should be happening either today or wednesday something like that the day should be adjusted just in case like you know if the series goes um or if the previous series um like you know the western conference finals and the eastern conference finals if they don't end up going to seven games or um if they don't end up going to six or if they don't even end up going to five then the finals day should be moved because again these the two comp the two matchups before the finals they ended in a short amount of time they ended in five games respectively i mean they ended in four games for the celtics five games for the mavericks so you could have given like you could have given the mavericks a whole weekend to rest and then maybe either today or monday would have had one of those playoff games being already played i mean i don't understand why wait so long for whatever reason it might be i genuinely don't understand why wait so long for uh just to play one game and this wait it, it really has me annoyed because it's like i'm sitting here wanting to talk about nba basketball but i can't talk about nba basketball because there is not a single game going on so that kind of stinks and it's really unfortunate so i mean that's basically all that needs to be talked about for this game thank the lord that um there's uh there's not going to be a single asterisk being put on this series because one of the things that i don't really like about how this playoffs has been progressing is the fact that the two teams in the eastern conference finals a lot of people are putting asterisks on their achievement and the fact that they made it so far because they're putting they're giving the celtics an asterisk because they played against the Cavs team that wasn't 100% healthy, as well as playing against the, the Miami Heat team that wasn't 100% healthy, and even the Pacers that weren't 100% healthy in their series. However, the Indiana Pacers, on the other hand, they also played an injured Bucks team as well as playing an injured Knicks team. So both of those teams are, like, uh, if we're going according to asterisks, they're where they're where they're at simply because of injuries and <clears throat> in my opinion i don't think that's really fair to uh the teams that have made it that far because it just doesn't make any sense to me like why are we discrediting all of the good things that these teams along with these players are doing it's just not fair it's not how it works and it shouldn't work like that now that's that's my opinion on it but that's I, I can't really say much about um i can't really say much about that so with that we are out of time for this first segment so now we will go ahead and go into the second segment where i talk about the um where the pacers would go from here seeing as how their regular season and their postseason runs has come to an end so i'll be right back after this short break be sure to stay tuned <laughs> 